Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. In one of the last videos I hacked and cloned a garage door opener. Today I will show you how to mill a prototype PCB to fit an AD9850 module, a step-down converter and an AT Tiny 85 on one PCB. I will show you the tool chain I am using to create quality PCB prototypes using my Chinese 6040 CNC mill. Just a remark at the beginning. This CNC mill is worth every dollar or Swiss franc I spent because it is big and powerful enough to mill decent sized parts and all materials up to the strength of aluminium. And it is exact enough to mill PCBs. During this video you will discover some enhancements I did to the machine. In order to keep this video short I will not explain these. Probably they will be part of a later video. So let's start with where we finished last time. I had a working prototype on a breadboard. Now I have to design a PCB to fit all together because the final device will be mounted below the saddle of my Harley. It has to be as small as possible and work off 12 to 14 volts. First, I ported the working sketch to an AT Tiny 85 and again tested it on a breadboard. I also decided to use the SMD version of the AT Tiny to show you that it is possible to mill SMD PCBs. I design my PCBs in Eagle. Eagle offers a free version, which is okay for most of our small PCBs. The PCB we produce today is a single sided and the components are at the bottom. On the top, I will mount the power supply and the AD9850 module. CNC milling of PCBs work differently than etching PCBs. Because the tool we use is only 0.1 mm wide, we cannot remove a lot of copper. This is why the PCB always has a big copper surface remaining between the traces. Good practice is to connect this copper to ground. In Eagle, this can be done by creating a polygon around the whole PCB and name it ground. As soon as you press the button Rat's Nest, you see the PCB more or less as it is milled later. For sure, the necessary connections are done to connect it to ground. Do not use too small traces. For SMD I use 15 mil, for through hole 20 mil or more. This protects you from waste through unusable boards during milling. The next step towards our PCB is to create so-called Gerber files. Fortunately, some nice guys wrote a free software to do exactly that. It is a user language program or ULP and can be downloaded from pcbcode.org. I enclose a link in the comments. We start now the ULP PCB-Gcode-Setup and get the first screen. Please select the bottom side marks as I selected. The top side is not necessary for today. Here you have also to decide where you want to zero your milling cutter later on. I zero the cutter at the vacuum table and therefore I have to enter zero in the milling depth field. The other three fields are optimized for my 10 degree engraving cutters. You can read the documentation if you want to have the details about this topic. Now we can go on to the next rider to enter more values. Because I do not want to lose a lot of time, I only want that the cutter moves 2 mm above the PCB. C down is a very important value. I zero the engraving cutter at the top of the PCB and let it only remove 0.1 mm of copper. This is not a lot and you can imagine the precision necessary to get a good result. 
if your cutter or your PCB attachment varies only 0.1 mm, then the cutter will not remove any copper and your PCB is useless. If it cuts deeper, it removes the copper between the traces, including the traces itself. Again, the PCB is unusable. Please enter the feed rates which are good for your CNC and if you can steer the spindle speed on your CNC from your PC, the values for its speed. On the next rider I choose a Mach 3 because this is the software I use to steer my CNC. On the next rider you can leave the fields as proposed. Just pay attention that you do not select do tool change with zero step. Otherwise you will kill your drills in fractions of a second. You do not need to care about the last rider. Now you press accept and make my board. PCB G code now creates a few files and show you the results. Please check them. If ok, you can move on to the next step. You find the new files in the directory of your eagle files. They end with .nc or .tap. These files contain the needed information for your CNC mill. You could go ahead with these files and load them onto your CNC. I use a few additional steps to improve the success rate of the process and to reduce the cost of cutters. The first step is to start a program written by myself. It prepares the files created by Eagle for the next steps. I will post it on GitHub and include a link in the comments. This program creates new files and numbers it from 0 to 4 according to the process steps. The first file is used to drill two index holes into the PCB. These index holes are needed to fix the copper plate at a very precise position. Of course, these holes must not be part of the area of your future PCB. You also could glue your PCB down with duct tape. Later you will see why I choose this way. The next file is used to drill the holes for the through hole components. And the other two files create the bottom and the top information where to remove the copper. This is why they are called etch. The last file could be used to mill a stencil. This is not necessary today because of our simple design. For the next process step I use a software called PCB G-Code Wizard. This is not a free software, but these $18 are ok for what you get. Unfortunately, this software is very picky about the file content and has no real error handling. This is why I have to pre-process my Gerber files and remove some comments inside these files. With this wizard I can now remove all unnecessary traces like traces around the PCB itself or around mounting holes. This step saves me a lot of time during milling and it also reduces wear and tear of the cutters. After saving the file we can go on to the last and very important step, the auto-leveling. As I said at the beginning, we have to work very precise, especially on the C-axis. Because this is not easy, we use a trick. We use the very same setup before milling to measure the real height of the copper surface and store it. If we correct our cutter movements using this stored information, we can live with much bigger inaccuracy and still get a good result. This is computing at its best. Use data to reduce the need for mechanical precision. To perform this miracle, I use Auto Leveler. Again, I paid a few British pounds for this great software. It uses the resulting file of the last step and enhances it with commands for the CNC mill. You will see later how this works. I think this is a very intelligent solution. I only need to correct the edge files, because drilling and milling is not very critical on the C-axis. Now we are ready to start up our mill. 
If you look at the middle, you see my do-it-yourself vacuum table, operated with our family vacuum cleaner. Again, this is not necessary, but I am an engineer and that's why I built one for me. This vacuum table has 0.9 mm index holes in the middle. The index file will create drill holes which fit exactly into these indexes and I can fix the PCB with needles. Now I can start with the drill file and drill the holes. To do that I zero the C-axis on the vacuum table with another gadget I built to my CNC router. The automatic zeroing tool. Next I change the cutting tool to the 10 degree cutter. This time I zero at the surface of the copper to give the file created by Autoleveler an initial height. The file created by this Autoleveler starts now to probe the area of the future print. As soon as it is finished, it starts with the cutting. During cutting, we see the correction of the C height. In Eagle, we choose 0.1 mm height. Here you can see that this height changes all the time because the PCB surface is not completely flat. After it is finished, we can go on to the last step, the milling of the board. Here my vacuum is not strong enough and I have to give two helping hands. You see also that I mill in two steps. This is also the result of my software. The two steps help to reduce the forces during milling. Now our do-it-yourself prototype is finished and ready to be used. You can decide about its quality. Just for the happy end of this video. This is the assembled garage door opener. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.